Hello, dear students. Uh, today we'll discuss the next part of the excretion, that is the mechanism of excretion. In the previous session, we have discussed about the excretory system. There is a special system for excretion in our body, which is known as excretory system or urinary system. Uh, the components of excretory systems are kidney, ureter, urinary bladder, urethra. We have discussed and how this urine is collected uh, from the kidneys then it is passed out it is stored in the urinary bladder and it is passed out through the urethra so but we will discuss today now how this urine is formed inside the kidney what the mechanism what is the mechanism behind it what happens inside the kidney uh, by which urine is formed Student, as we have told that the kidney is called as filtering organ. You know, the kidneys are called filtering, filtering organ of our body because it filters the blood and remove the nitrogenous waste from the body. Then uh, the question comes, how the kidney does this? How this uh, mechanism of filtration takes place inside the kidney? Is there any filter inside the kidney? You know that uh, students, you have the filter in your house, uh, RO system, uh, different company like uh, uh, say AquaGuard, uh, Kent RO, different filters are there which filters the water, removes the waste materials, unnecessary or uh, uh, the uh, which are not suitable for body, they are removed and pure water they are giving. So is there any RO filter is present inside the kidney? So we will discuss about now. Okay, student, uh, there is no uh, actually just uh, a filtering system. Uh, system is there, but there is not uh, any, uh, uh, you can say, any uh, RO filter is present inside the kidney. Actually, the filtration is done by one small microscopic, uh, you know, tube like structures. One structure is there inside the kidney, which is known as nephron. That is called nephron so this nephron is a very important organ or important part of the kidney whose diagram is already it is I have drawn in the board so before uh, describing this first we'll read about what are nephron actually the nephron actually uh, you know that nephron can be called as the filtration units of the kidney there are two kidneys and each kidney has a thousands or millions of many small microscopic coil like structures which are called as nephron and these nephron uh, are present inside the kidney and actually these nephron do the filtration these are the filtration units filtration units of kidney because as we have told the kidney filters the blood actually inside the kidney the nephron does this function the filtering function was done by is done by nephrons present inside the kidney so each kidney has numerous small microscopic coil structure which are called nephron they are the filtration units because they do the filtration of the blood actually they remove out remove the waste nitrogenous waste and forms the urine then we'll read about the structure of nephron so i think you got the uh, definition of nephron what is nephron again i'm repeating each kidney has uh, numerous small microscopic coil like structures which are called nephron which actually does the filtration of blood and uh, removes the waste material and forms the urine so if we'll discuss the structure of a uh, nephron the diagram is already i have done in this uh, board you can find out the uh, nephron the structure of nephron So as diagram is here, that's why I am writing here. 
the main part of the nephron is you know that uh, nephron has mainly three parts one number one one is called bowman's capsule bowman's capsule okay the second part is glomerulus okay then the third part convoluted tubule bowman's capsule glomerulus and convoluted tubule these are the three main parts and we will discuss one by one what is this actually you see as I have drawn the diagram you see the cup like structure it is a cup like structure this cup like structure is called Bowman's capsule so the Bowman actually uh, scientist the name of a scientist so Bowman's capsule means because it is a cup like structure this capsule like structure hence it is known as Bowman's capsule then glomerulus you know that inside this the capillary is actually the group of capillaries is known as glomerulus the renal artery when it comes it forms the capillaries the capillaries which is present inside the Bowman's capsule the group of capillaries present inside the Bowman's capsule is called glomerulus okay then the third part is convoluted tubule you see from the uh, Bowman's capsule one tube like structure is there like this so the tube like structure is known as convoluted tubule the convoluted means it is uh, wounded it is not a straight one okay it form a uh, uh, you can say spherical or coil like structure hence it is called convoluted tubule and this convoluted tubule has actually three parts this convoluted tubule is three parts again a one is pct b the loop of henley and c that is uh, dct So students, uh, as I have told, that convoluted table has three parts, PCT, loop of Henley and DCT. If you see the diagram here, you can find this is the PCT. PCT full form is actually proximal convoluted tubule. So this can be called as proximal convoluted tubule. This is the short form is PCT the actually the tube make a coil like structure and this coil like structure is known as PCT or proximal convoluted table and after it it forms a U shaped you know this is U shaped uh, structure and this U shaped structure is known as loop of Henley it is a loop like structure hence it is called loop of Henley Henley is also a name of a scientist so according to that uh, scientist name the structure is given the name as loop of Henley and then after it again it forms some coil like structure in the last which is known as DCT and DCT full form will be distal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule and short form is DCT so all the uh, three parts PCT, loop of Henley and DCT is the part of convoluted tubule. So this is the structure of a nephron. Again I am telling, so uh, a cup like structure is there which is known as Bowman's capsule. Inside the cup like structure, Bowman's capsule, there is a group of capillaries which is known as glomerulus. Then the tube like structure from the Bowman's capsule is a long convoluted tubule and this, con this convoluted tubule has again divided into three parts. One is PCT, loop of Henley, the U-shaped -like, loop 
and the last one is DCT distal convoluted tubule and you can see this is not a part of a nephron actually but this is a tube which is known as collecting duct uh, why it is called collecting duct actually it collects all the urine here so that is why it is known as collecting duct and you can see the branch here and this branch actually this is uh, uh, this space is given and this is a branch in which other nephrons are joined actually so only i have drawn one nephron here another another so different nephron will join here here one nephron is there here another nephron is there here another nephron is there so all the nephron uh, the waste is collected and passed to the collecting duct so as it collects all the uh, urine or waste from the nephron hence the name is given collecting duct this is the structure of a nephron then uh, students as i told i am repeating the word nephron okay nephron is the filtration unit present in the kidney whereas another word is called neuron neuron and nephron sometimes a confusing word is there for the student neuron is the nerve cell present inside the nervous system the nervous system you know that nerve cell special name is given neuron n e u r o n neuron and neuron and nephron here the nephron word is used it is a filtration unit present in the kidney <coughs> whereas neuron is a term that is a nerve cell present in the nervous system present in brain and spinal cord we will read in uh, control and coordination so don't confuse about the word nephron and neuron okay so this is all about the process of uh, sorry the structure of a nephron then we will read about the mechanism of let find out some space here so that i can explain it okay so now we will read about the function we have read about the structure then function what the uh, nephron does inside the nephron actually two main functions are there one is ultra filtration second reabsorption and actually the third thing also takes place that is tubular secretion the three main function takes place inside the nephron so now we are uh, discussing about the function of a nephron what happens inside the nephron these three things happens actually one is ultra filtration reabsorption and tubular secretion you see how it takes place the ultra filtration the name was uh, describing that it a filtration thing so what happens the blood from the renal artery goes to the glomerulus okay so inside the glomerulus what happens it is a group of capillaries glomerulus is a group of capillaries present inside the bowman's capsule so the bowman's capsule wall and the glomerulus wall they are very thin so this ultra filtration actually takes place between bowman's capsule and glomerulus and glomerulus so between this wall of glomerulus and bowman's capsule it is very thin so the most part of the blood the liquid part of the blood is filtered out and it will passes to the convoluted tubule so what happens inside the ultra filtration you see so the wall of bowman's capsule the most part of the blood that is the liquid part of the blood like plasma some cells they 
filtered through this wall and passes to the convoluted tubule. So like uh, the process is like a tea stainer, you know, when you make tea. So uh, after uh, uh, making the tea, what do you do? You stain it through a tea stainer. So when you put the whole tea here, what happens? The liquid part goes through it as a filtrate and the residue, the substance left behind in the stainer is the tea leaves and some part of the tea. So exactly same thing, it also acts like a stainer. So the liquid part of the blood and some cells which are very small in size, they can pass through this Bowman's capsule wall and goes to the convoluted table as a filtrate. So inside the filtrate, uh, the filtrate actually, what are the things present in that filtrate, blood filtrate? So the plasma, liquid part, and inside the plasma, all the dissolved substances, and some cells, sorry, some substances, uh, like plasma substances, like uh, you can say some proteins, maybe some amino acids, salts, they can pass out through the filtrate. So actually the wall is not sufficient enough to pass out the cell. So all the cells, WBC, RBC and platelets, they will remain inside the blood. But the filtrate will be the liquid part that is the plasma and all the other dissolved substances with as well as the nitrogenous waste. So the waste along with water, other helpful substances are also passed out in the form of filtrate and goes to the convoluted tubule. Then when it will pass out the convoluted tubule like this, so it will pass, okay. But what happens, you can see here, the uh, there is a group of capillaries, from the group of capillaries, again and one uh, blood vessels is there, which surrounds this nephron and then it goes and forms the renal vein. This is the renal vein because the blood again, uh, you know that uh, this is the, so let me, the different color, okay, uh, blood, the filtrate goes out and again the rest part of the blood flows through it okay and then it will pass like this and pass out in the form of renal vein but what happens you see so the first part as i as have told that ultra filtration takes place between the bowman's capsule and glomerulus the filtrate pass out the which consists of plasma harmful substance as well as the helpful substance like amino acid, proteins and water, they goes in the form of filtrate. Then what happens during this, uh, this vessels surrounds this, the convoluted tubule. So what happens, the second, the second process starts that is reabsorption. So in the reabsorption what happens, from the convoluted tubule, the blood vessels takes out the helpful substance from the filtrate. What I am telling, listen carefully. The filtrate which is present in the convoluted table again goes back to the blood vessel. So the blood which is present in the blood vessels, they reabsorb. They take out the helpful substance from the blood. So what happens if all the filtrate will goes out in the form of urine, then what will happen? Most of the glucose, amino acid, salts, water, it will remove out in the form of urine. So helpful substance along with the harmful substance will go in the form of urine. So that is why to reabsorb, to take that helpful substance from that filtrate, the reabsorption process takes place and actually this reabsorption takes place between the PCT and loop of Henle. 
So what happens from the filtrate, the important and harmful, sorry, helpful substances like major amount of water, uh, glucose, you can say amino acids, salts, they are reabsorbed into the blood. So now when this filtrate will move slowly, slowly through this, so most uh, important and most of the helpful substances will reabsorb by the blood and in the filtrate the nitrogenous waste will be there. Then what happens? The third process is called tubular secretion. Sometimes the reabsorption and secretion both are taking place at the same time. So what happens from the blood and filtrate? Now two things is there. So inside the here it is the filtrate. Okay. And inside the here it is blood. Okay. So blood and filter inside the fil blood and filtrate. So these two things actually takes place in the convoluted tubule. So from the filtrate, from the filtrate reabsorption takes place. The helpful substances or essential helpful substances are reabsorbed from the filtrate to blood and from blood to filtrate the harmful substances are given back to the filtrate got the point or not what i am telling oh, the filtrate which i am shown in red okay in the red mark which is given that is the filtrate and the uh, blood is present inside the blood vessel which is I have shown in the black arrow mark. So between the filtrate and blood the two things happen reabsorption and tubal secretion and they are actually taking place in PCT, loop of Henle and DCT. In all the convoluted tubule these two functions are taking place at the same time. In reabsorption what happens? The helpful substances like major amount of water, amino acids, glucose is taken back from the filtrate to the blood. The blood absorbs it. That's why it is called reabsorption. And in tubular secretion what happens? The Still the nitrogenous waste which is present inside the blood again given back to the filtrate by the process called tubular secretion. Sometimes ATP, it is active process, ATPs are used, energy is used to give the nitrogen waste back into the filtrate. So what happens when this uh, filtrate will move and up to when it will reach to the DCT, then almost all the important or helpful substances from the filtrate goes back to the blood and it consists of only the nitrogenous wastes which we call as urine. So the urea along with some water and other nitrogen waste they will form the urine and then the urine is collected through to the collecting duct and this collecting duct is actually joined to the ureter. So from this uh, collecting duct the urine is passed to the ureter then from the ureter it will go to the urinary bladder it will store inside the urinary bladder and then it will pass out through the urethra in the form of urine. So this is the all about the functions and structure of a nephron. So the main functions are three that is ultrafiltration which is taking place between the Bowman's capsule and glomerulus reabsorption taking place inside the convoluted table in which the helpful substances from the filtrate is reabsorbed back into the blood and tubular secretion it is also taking place in this convoluted tubule. In this process, the nitrogenous waste still present in the blood is again given back to the filtrate or to the uh, substance present in the convoluted tubule. So then 
when this filtrate will pass slowly pass through this coil like structure and it will reach, it, reach in the DCT last part of the commutative tubule then it forms the urine which is given to the collecting duct then collecting duct is joined with to the ureter it will give the urine to the ureter from the ureter it will go to the urinary bladder and it will pass out through the urethra in the form of urine so this is all about the functions of nephron so another thing is there actually uh, the reabsorption and tubular secretion is a very important thing sometimes what happens the water amount of water is reabsorbed back into the blood decides the amount of water present in the blood sometimes you know that when you drink much more water urine formation also takes place in much more amount you go frequently urination why because when the amount of water present inside the blood will be more then what will happen the reabsorption will take place slowly so less amount of water will reabsorb so more amount of urine is formed and when you uh, do not take much water uh, during the summer days you know uh, sweating takes place so less water amount is present in the blood then the urine formation also takes place in less amount because most of the water is reabsorbed into the blood from the filtrate so it is also the kidney is also uh, responsible for or the nephron is also responsible for osmoregulation osmoregulation means the word osmoregulation means regulating the amount of water and salts inside the body so if uh, the function of kidney is there if the question comes what is the function of kidney you can write the kidney filters the blood remove the nitrogenous waste no doubt this is the first uh, function the second function is also it helps in osmoregulation in the body means amount of water inside the body it is fixed okay so how much amount of water will be there inside the blood that will be decided by the kidney that is actually done by the nephron so it is helping osmoregulation so two function one is filtration of the blood and second is osmoregulation so this is all about the uh, mechanism of excretion and how uh, text, how it takes place inside the human body okay the last part of the chapter is how excretion takes place inside the plants so the last part will that is excretion in plant so students uh, is there any excretory system inside the plants like we have the kidneys no actually plant have no such definite excretory system but excretion process is there because it is a living thing metabolic activities will also present inside the plant body so some waste must be produced and that waste metabolic waste should be removed but there are different ways by which uh, the plants can excrete out its waste but there is no such excretory system any specific system is not present in the plant body so uh, the different modes of excretion the different modes of excretion in plants in plants are we will discuss one by one the first one some of the plants what they do uh, you know that uh, as I told the excretory product of human being is definitely urea you can tell other nitrogenous waste but what is the excretory product of plant you know the plant have the major excretory product is gas so three main excretory product is present in the plant or plant excrete out three major waste that is the two gases oxygen carbon dioxide and water so the if the question comes what are the excretory products in a plant you will write the three things actually the major excretory product is carbon dioxide oxygen and water then how it is excretory product you know plant do photosynthesis and in photosynthesis you know it the products are 
ग्लूकोज द फूड ऑक्सीजन एंड वाटर सो ऑक्सीजन एंड वाटर इज द एस्कटोरी प्रोडक्ट ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस सिमिलरली ड्यूरिंग रेस्पिरेशन यू नो द ग्लूकोज इज ब्रोकन डाउन टू फॉर्म द प्रोडक्ट आर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड वाटर एंड एनर्जी सो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज रिलीज ड्यूरिंग रेस्पिरेशन वाटर इज ऑल्सो रिलीज एंड सिमिलरली फोटोसिंथेसिस ऑक्सीजन एंड वाटर इज ऑल्सो रिलीज सो द थ्री मेजर कैस्टोरी प्रोडक्ट आर ऑक्सीजन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड वाटर सो वट द प्लांट प्लांट्स डू दे गिव आउट द मेजर एस्कटेड प्रोडक्ट दे गिव आउट द गैसियस एस्कटेड प्रोडक्ट वॉट आर द गैसियस गैसियस एक्सक्रेटेड प्रोडक्ट दैट इज आई टोल्ड नाउ दैट इज ऑक्सीजन एंड दैट इज ऑक्सीजन एंड सीओ टू थ्रो स्टोमाटा थ्रो स्टोमाटा सो आई कैन से द स्टोमाटा इज ए एस्क्रेटरी ऑर्गन ऑफ प्लांट लाइक वी हैव द किडनी इज एस्क्रेटरी ऑर्गन मेजर एस्क्रेटरी ऑर्गन इज किडनी सो इफ द क्वेश्चन कम्स वॉट इज द एस्क्रेटरी ऑर्गन इन प्लांट यू कैन राइट स्टोमाटा दिस इज द एस्क्रेटरी ऑर्गन ऑफ plant through which carbon dioxide and oxygen is given out gaseous exchange takes place then the second uh, process or second way the plant does plants give out the extra water through extra water through stomata through stomata by the process called transpiration we have read already in transportation in plants so transpiration is a process in which the water extra water goes out in the form of water vapor through stomata so uh, that is also a part of excretory system or you can say it is a part of is a process of excretion the plants give out the extra water in the form of vapor by this process called transpiration which also takes place through the stomata then uh, in the third way some plants what they do some plants uh some plants store the waste in old leaves old leaves and bark which are removed periodically so what happens some plants what they do they store the waste uh, in old leaves and bark bark you know the outer covering of the stem is called bark so Uh, when they will store in the old leaves and bark and then what happens uh, after some time the old leaves and bark they are uh, given out or they fall off from the plants as a part of uh, a process you know that uh, when the leaves uh, they becomes old they fall out from the plant so the waste which is the waste present in the plant will store in the old leaves and when the old leaves will fall so the waste will be removed from the plant so that is also done in the form of bark you know outer covering of stem so in some plant you can say the bark is also removed out periodically so the waste are first stored in the bark and old leaves and they are removed from the plant in some plant it also this type of excretion takes place then uh, number 4 in some other ways in some plants <coughs> the waste are stored in stored in cellular vacuoles you know the plant if you see the structure of a plant cell there is a large central vacuole is present uh, so the vacuole is a store house of the plant cell so inside the vacuole they can also store the waste in some cases they can store the waste in the vacuoles then uh, some plants 
give out waves in the form of resins and gums. So in some plants you know that they produce some resins and some gums is produced in the plant. Actually they are the excretory product. Uh, resins gums you know the lack uh, uh, for sealing works you know uh, to seal any parcel one substance is used that is also a one type of resin that is also a plant excretory product sometimes you know during the worship of uh, some goddess we use some uh, substance that is actually in Durga Puja you use that uh, some substance which produce the smoke uh, which normally we commonly call as Juna. So that is actually a powder like structure. Okay, small stone like structure actually. We powder it, then we we'll put it. So that is actually a resin of the salt plant. So it is a excretory product uh, which is used as a uh, insect repellent. That's why we use at our home. So these are the different uh, ways by which plant can give out the waste and the last one is and some plants what they do uh, some plants also excrete out waste to the soil through their roots through their roots. So through their roots they excrete out, they give out the waste to the nearby soil. So these are the different, six different types of modes of excretion in plant. There is no definite excretory system but in these different ways plant can give out the waste from the, their body. Uh, this is all about the excretion of plant. I think uh, you will enjoy this topic and thank you for watching this video and if you like this video please comment share and subscribe it thank you